Hi, this is Tino with Bluesy News. We're at Winternam 2016 now. I'm with Jeff Salmon with the Les Paul Foundation, and you have a basically a touring bus that you tour the country with? Exactly. We uh, have a 53-foot double-wide tractor trailer that's traveling around the country. We did a big kickoff event on Les's uh, 100th birthday last year, June 9th, in Times Square. And we had just about every guitar player you can imagine playing at the Hard Rock. It was Steve Miller, Stevie Vai, Johnny A, Joe Satriani, Joe Bonamassa. Everybody was there. It was just a wonderful event to kick off this, what we're doing for this year celebration of Les's legacy. So it's about a year old now that you've taken this uh, around the country. Yeah, well, we started in June, so I guess it's eight months. And we're going to continue until uh, May, the end of this year. Probably end up doing another event uh, in New York. But we're, we're going. We're here we're at NAM. We're going to be at South by Southwest. We're at Summerfest. We've gone to a lot of fairs and festivals around the country. And there's also a huge uh, educational component to this because when you say Les Paul to people, unfortunately, there's a percentage that don't know who he is. There's a slightly higher percentage that say, oh, the guitar. But nobody, very few people, except the people here at NAM, know about the recording technology innovations and creativity and the way he thought and just invented things if they didn't exist at the time. So uh, it's, it's basically to get people to sort of think innovatively and creatively after going through this exhibit. And anybody who says they know Les Paul, I guarantee after they walk out the back end of this thing, they're going to know things that they didn't know before. Wow, and you were friends with him like about 25 years? Yeah, yeah, I actually met him in New York when he was playing at Fat Tuesdays. I used to live in Manhattan. The uh, club Fat Tuesdays was in between where I worked and where I lived. And I passed by a couple of times and it said, gee, Les Paul is playing on Monday night, I should go to that. And then the next Monday, oh, Les Paul is playing on Monday night. And I had been traveling a bit. I said, gee, I gotta make sure I'm in town for one Monday night. I went one Monday night and probably for about three or four years, if you wanted to know where I was on a Monday night. I was at Fat Tuesdays with Les, so I sort of was introduced to him as a fan, and then we became friendly, and then he asked me to be on the uh, trustee for the foundation, and I was honored, so uh, that's where all this sort of started, then doing this traveling uh, experience on his life. Wow, nice, and the putting together this uh, bus and taking it, or the double Y trailer and taking it all over the country, that was your brainchild? Well, I, 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 it was something, the, the concept was when Les passed, I realized that people didn't know who Les was. And we, the foundation, talked about different things we could do. And there had always been talk, and I sort of mentioned, gee, if we could do some kind of a traveling exhibit on Les's life, it would be great. And we finally put it all together, and now it's here at NAM for, for everybody to see. It's a thousand square feet, a lot of interactive. Uh, we actually have some stems from Les's original recordings of Brazil that we found on the original acetates at the house. And you can actually add a rhythm guitar, bass, and drums to it, program it, do special effects. Put your email in, and it'll send uh, your mix to the to your phone. You can also take a picture with Les, have that sent to your phone. There's an, also another station where we talk about Les's new sound, and you can create all kinds of sound effects and create a new sound mix. And again, it gets sent to your phone, and you can share it on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you want to do with your friends. Wow, it's a lot, a lot of history there. Yeah, it it actually is pretty cool, and and it all is interactive. There's no artifacts. Les always said and, and told me. Especially, he didn't like to see things in Lucite cases with a little note below it that says, this is the pulverizer, or this is the guitar he used here, whatever. He, like, why have it in the case? I want people to experience these things. So short of having guitars there for people to play, which wasn't the purpose of right. it, we wanted everybody to understand what he went through in life. You know, how Gibson told him no for 10 years about the electric guitar, or how Capital said How High the Moon was not going to be a hit for five years, or on and on. And all these stories exist there. So it's all about perseverance as well as creative thinking. So he was actually told no at times. Oh, please come and see. He was told no many, many, many times. And I think if there's one big story about all this, when you look at it and absorb it, this wasn't a guy who did it and then immediately it happened, the end result. He was persistent, didn't take no for an answer. And especially in the educational systems that we're going to around the country, that's the message we want kids to hear about. Is that, you know, don't give up. If you think you might be able to do something, keep going. You're going to be told no a dozen times, but don't take it as an answer. Absolutely. Wow. Perseverance. Um, so it's amazing. So now the kids around the country are learning that Les Paul is not a brand. He is a human being and an inventor and an innovator of this industry. Yeah, exactly. You know, the byproducts of his innovation and creativity are the guitar, 
are the right. sound on sound technology, are the close miking techniques, are the reverb, are the echo, are the, you know, all those stories are great stories, but it is about his innovative and creative thinking. That's the word we want to get out. And uh, from an educational standpoint, the foundation's doing great stuff. We actually named a school in Waukesha, Wisconsin, the Les Paul Middle School. It's where Les went wow, to school. Oh, really? And not only is the name on the door, but there's courses being taught in the school. So these kids don't just say they go to Les Paul Middle School, they know who Les this man Paul is, is which is what it's all about. You know, this traveling exhibit is great. We have it on the road for a year, but our goal is to make sure after it stops that his legacy continues on and the word is out there. Nice. Well, thank you for keeping it alive and educating us on, on who Les Paul is. And I, I love him because of the recording background. Sure, um, sure. It was the whole package. He was just everything, entertainment, the jokes, the stories about what he did, his playing. I mean, sometimes he'd talk half of a set and play the other half of a set. He was, I found him so interesting and fascinating, and on a weekly basis I'd hear stories and say, my God, this man did what? Did he say Bing Crosby? Yeah, so it was sort of like, you know, having my own curriculum on Monday nights, hearing about this man from the horse's mouth. So yeah, I was a guitar player and that's how it started, but uh, like I said, after, after being a fan for a while, we became friendly and went from there. And the biggest lesson, never take no for an answer. Absolutely. I mean, that, that really is the bottom line. Think creatively, think innovatively, no matter how big or small that idea is, and don't take no for an answer. He certainly didn't. Awesome. This is Tino, Bluesy News. We're at Winter Nam 2016. <laughs>